Bonjour, welcome for this DVD about the new manipulative approach of the spine on the pelvis. So we will see now the cervical spine. We have a lot of patients with whiplash injury. They suffer, they suffer, we must help these people. If you manipulate directly the spine, like in high velocity, very often it's more painful. We have the soft tissues we are suffering. The disc, the ligamentous system, venous system, arterial system, muscular system. So we'll try to do something very precise also on the disc, on the foramen, on the venous system, in order to permit to these people to have a better life. It's very important for us. If we see the cervical spine, first thing, the facet of sagittal. So the movements we are going to do are more sagittal, coming from posterior to anterior. If we want to have some effect on the foramen, also on the disc and on the facet. So we will see some techniques very precise about this direction. To find the brachial plexus, a little more lateral that we have done, you have the clavicle, just the subclavian artery, you feel the pulse of the subclavian artery, the brachial plexus is posterolateral. And when some people you can see the jugular vein, it's just at the level of the jugular vein. It runs after underneath the clavicle, and remember, goes underneath the pec minor that we have seen with the shoulder. So the point for us is to make move a little bit this brachial plexus laterally because he must have this movement to be free. Small compression, as we used to say, but traction. And with the traction, we move the shoulder, we will show you, we move the shoulder, caudal, lateral, and the thumb is on the brachial plexus, and with the shoulder on the thumb, we try to make move the brachial plexus laterally. Remember, when a nerve cannot run normally, each time there is some tension in the nerve and you have some pain. Remember, you check the pulse of the subclavian artery, you go posterior lateral, and you appreciate the different fibers and direction of the brachial plexus, it's where you have some difficulty to move it posteriorly and medially that there is a problem. After you put one thumb on the brachial plexus, the other one on the cervical spine, and you do a gentle stretching following the listening as I'm going to show you. We have the right fingers. They are just at the level of cervical spine, C5, C6, C7. It's not so much to stretch, it's to hold the cervical spine to maintain it. We have the subclavian pulse. And when you see the jugular vein with the patient, it just you put your finger at the level of the jugular vein. Here you have the brachial plexus, and you feel if there is a tension, more medial, lateral, posterior. You hold, you grip the shoulder. A small compression with your thumb, you maintain the cervical spine, and you do a traction. You push, the traction is more on the shoulder. You have just a contact, a light contact with your thumb. You close your eyes, and you have the feeling that you are in a three dimension. So the hand, left hand, right hand, are working in induction. And it's because you move the shoulder that you have a traction on the brachial plexus. I repeat, it's not because you do this, because very often when people have some pain, you cannot move so much the cervical spine. You maintain the cervical spine, a thumb on the brachial plexus, you work with your body, you don't use your force, and you follow the listening. For the shoulder, it's not something straight. It's sometimes it goes anterior, sometimes posterior, lateral, and so on. You follow what the body tells to your fingers. Mm -hmm.